biggest games, the best performances, expert analysis. You are locked on now. What's going on, everyone? You are listening to Locked On Now, local experts on the biggest stories around the NBA. I'm your host, Kim Becker, and it was a big day of basketball. Basketball is back. We've got a lot to get to with the help of our local experts and our Locked On Network. But first, let's talk about the biggest game. The biggest game. It's Boston, it's New York, and it did not disappoint in Madison Square Garden on Wednesday night. The Knicks and the Celtics plated to a double overtime thriller with the stars on display to start the season. Jalen Brown put up huge numbers for the Celtics, but Julius Randle and a former Celtic put on a show for the New York fans to start the season. For more on the full story from the winning side, our Locked On Knicks host, Alex Wolf. Hey everybody, Alex Wolf from the Locked On Knicks podcast here. And wow, what a way for the Knicks to start their 2021 to 2022 season at the Garden, national TV versus the Boston Celtics, heated division rivalry, 138 to 134 win in double overtime. Julius Randle has 35 points. Evan Fournier has 32. RJ Barrett has 19, all in the second half in overtime. And it was a heck of a performance for the Knicks. Up and down a little bit. The defense was waning at times. But ultimately, they come out with the victory over the Celtics in this one. And what a way to start the season. As Julius Randle said, uh, I just want to get home and go to bed. And I don't blame him after that hell of an effort to start the season. So there's going to be plenty more about this on Locked on Knicks. Be sure to tune in because we're here for you guys every single day covering the Knicks. Seven Celtics scored in double figures, but it was not enough to start the Ime Udoka era with a win. Here's John Corrales from Locked On Celtics with more on what Boston fans should be thinking after a tough opening loss to their rival New York. (sighs) Boston Celtics. Two overs. First game of the season, lose to the Knicks. One thirty-eight, one thirty-four. Jalen Brown, forty-six points, most points ever for the Celtics in an opener. And then they were good, passing the ball. They were doing good things, and then they got into some bad habits. And then Marcus Smart made a bunch of bad decisions, and then he hits the game tying three-pointer after a logo shot from Jalen Brown. And then that first overtime, oh my God, just back and forth, back and forth. And then everybody just got tired. Uh, So much, I can't, there was a steal and a missed dunk and then a missed, uh, they gotta catch my breath. I'll cover this on the Lockdown Celtics podcast. I got a lot to catch up on. That was crazy. Watch the show on YouTube. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. (sighs) <sighs> oh, <God. sighs> and coming up next we had the pacers and hornets and we can hear from our locked on pacers host with more the indiana pacers fall in their first game of the season 123 to 122 to the charlotte hornets close game at the end pacers had the lead with 10 seconds left before a foul allowed the hornets to hit two free throws pacers could not get a bucket on their last possession to get the win but the clutch time isn't the story of this game for the Pacers. They had some good performances from guys like DeMontis Sabonis and Chris Duarte who combined for 60, but none of that matters. They were up 23 points in the middle of the third quarter of this game, gave up a 24-0 a zero run to Charlotte who ended up waltzing through the third quarter. They won that frame 33-13 to 13 in their way to the win, and the Pacers won every other quarter. They outscored Charlotte. The rest of the way in that game, they did very well in all the moments except for a small stretch in the third where they just absolutely let off the gas and the Hornets end up deserving this game. They make a huge comeback and make it happen. The Pacers couldn't get enough scoring in that quarter. Their defense fell apart for just a few moments and they blew it. They need to clean up and and not have a stretch like that if they want to win their next game. They take on the Wizards on Friday. So another opportunity to not blow a 23-point lead and waste huge performances from two key starters. We'll break it all down on the Locked On Pacers podcast. And then we can turn it over to the Kings and the Blazers, our Locked On Kings host, Matt George, has a good recap for you here. And then we'll turn it over to Mike Richmond, our Locked On Blazers host. 
If you listen closely, you can hear the collective sigh of relief from all of Sacramento. The Kings squeak by the Portland Trailblazers. They start the season 1-0. and Hi, I'm Matt George, host of the Locked on Kings podcast. Thanks to absolute heroics and a new career high from Harrison Barnes. The Kings, who look like a new version of themselves that then kind of reverted into an old version of themselves, held on, withstood the storm, defeating the Portland Trailblazers 124 to 121. The Kings were outscored 36 to 24 in the fourth quarter, gave up 72 in the second half after allowing just 40 nine in the first half the defense looked good and defense is what we've heard a lot about during this offseason the Kings trying to correct that defense but you knew sooner or later the Portland Trailblazers offense was going to come alive and the Kings to their credit withstood the storm mainly because of the play of Harrison Barnes he finishes with 36 points a career high eight three-pointers win a perfect five of five from three-point range in the third quarter uh in his debut Davion Mitchell had a couple of really solid defensive uh uh, possessions, especially in the first half, uh, forced some turnovers from both Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum. Had CJ begging for bailout calls in the first half. Second half, though, the defense wasn't really there. Buddy Heald was also excellent in this game. 17 points, very efficient. Five of nine off the bench. He didn't start, but he did close the game, and that's what matters. The Kings, 1-0. and oh, Now they look to the Utah Jazz in Sacramento on Friday. We'll break down this Kings win on the Locked on Kings podcast. Well, the Blazers made it interesting, but they came up short, losing 124-121 to the Kings in the home opener of the start of the 2021-2022 season. I'm Mike Richmond, host of Lockdown Blazers. Portland trailed by 18 in the third quarter and looks like a mess, but a late rally. They came all the way back, only to have Damian Lillard miss a shot at the buzzer that would have sent it to overtime. There was no watch tapping. This one ended in misery. Blazers start 0-1, a rocky start to the new season. Make sure you listen to Lockdown Blazers for more. And you're listening to Locked On Now. Thanks for making Locked On Now your first listen every weekday morning. Stay tuned as we go around the league of the first day of the NBA. I'm Kim Becker. Welcome back to Locked On Now, and thanks for making us your first listen every weekday morning. Let's go around the league of the NBA to recap all of the games from the first day. We turn it over to the Chicago Bulls and Detroit Pistons. Chicago took the W in this one, and we have both our Locked On Bulls host, Matt Peck, and Locked On Pistons host, Ku Khalil, with more. The Pistons lose a close one. Welcome back to another season of Piston Basketball. I'm Cooper Hill, host of the Lockdown Pistons Podcast. The Pistons lose a close one tonight to the Chicago Bulls, 94-90. I thought the Pistons were going to come out here, and honestly, I thought they were going to get blown out. Chicago put together a pretty good team in the offseason. I thought they'd come out here, They especially after how they played in the preseason. I thought Chicago was going to come out here and win handedly, but they did not. The Pistons lost by a score of 94-88. to They were led by Jeremy Grant with 24 points and 8 of 20 shooting with not the most efficient night. Uh, definitely not the most efficient night for either teams in general. The score is 94 to 88. This is not 2004 anymore. This is 2021. This team, both teams really struggled offensively. Uh, I won't say the game was uh, very, very entertaining to watch from that perspective. But if you like defense, this was a game for you. But yeah, it was good to see the Pistons play hard against the Bulls. There were a couple takeaways that we're going to be talking about on the Lockdown Pistons podcast. So make sure you guys tune in for that tomorrow on all your podcast platforms or on YouTube where we're at now. So good game tonight. Pistons lose 94 to 88, but stay tuned to tomorrow's episode of Locked On Pistons Podcast, where we'll dive deeper in what we saw from tonight's game. What's that age-old saying in sports? Ugly wins still count the same? That was the story tonight for the Bulls' season-opening victory, 94-88 over their Central Division rivals, the Detroit Pistons. What's up, y'all? Matt Peck here from Locked On Bulls with your post-game takeaway. The Bulls win in Detroit to get to 1-0, their first season-opening victory in Five years, folks. And for all the talk this offseason about the new pieces, acquiring Nikola Vucevic at last year's trade deadline, signing trades for Lonzo Ball and DeMar DeRozan, it was Zach Levine, the incumbent all-star, who carried the Bulls home tonight. 34 points on 17 shots and a perfect 11 of 11 from the free throw line, including some big clutch free throws late in a tight game. Probably shouldn't have been that tight of a game, but the Bulls just could not hit water out of a boat in the first half they were missing open threes Vooch himself missed five or six layups in the first half to Rosen missed mid-range shots that he usually cans it was not a great shooting night for the Bulls 
Seven made threes, not even 45% from the field. It was an ugly shooting night, but they found a way to win. Credit to their defense for keeping them in this game, especially through that ugly first half, and Zach Levine for putting them on their shoulders and carrying them to their first win of the season. Bulls face the Pelicans on Friday night to try to get to 2-0. For a full breakdown of this Bulls win over the Detroit Pistons, check out tomorrow's episode of Locked On Bulls with me and my guy Big Dave, wherever you get your podcasts. Locked On Bulls, your team every day. And next, we turn it over to the Washington Wizards and Toronto Raptors. Washington came away with a W on this one, and we have our Locked On Raptors host, Sean Woodley, to tell us what happened with Toronto. The Toronto Raptors, well, they're going to be a work in progress. I'm Sean Woodley here from Locked On Raptors. At, after the Raptors' 98-83 loss to the Washington Wizards on opening night in the first game back in this building, Scotiabank Arena, for the Raptors in 600 days. It was a really fun occasion up until the game began as the Raptors' half-court offense, which was always going to be a struggle without their best player, Pascal Siakam, but it looked really rough in this one. It took them more than two and a half quarters to scrape across 50 points, and it wasn't really until the fourth quarter when Scotty Barnes, Delano Banton, two of the rookies on this team, along with some other sort of bit parts, you know, forged almost a, an attempt at a fake comeback. It wasn't quite there. They never really had a shot of winning this one, but the real takeaway from this one, beyond the young guys doing exciting and cool things, is that this is going to be a work in progress offensively for this team. And if they have any illusions of being a playoff team, perhaps sliding into that sixth seed in the Eastern Conference and getting out of the play-in, it's going to be on the half-court offense coming around. Pascal Siakam will help with that, but it's going to be a long time coming here for the Raptors to turn things around after a really rough offensive start against the Wizards on Wednesday night. Next up, the Cleveland Cavaliers took on the Memphis Grizzlies, and we have our Grizzlies host, Sean Coleman, and our Cavs host, Chris Mannings, to tell you guys what happened in that big game. The 2021-2022 regular season has finally arrived for the Memphis Grizzlies with their season opener against the Cleveland Cavaliers, and it was a great first game for the Grizzlies offense. 132 total points, John Morant 37 points, the Cleveland Cavaliers went big with Jared Allen, Evan Mobley, and Lori Markkinen in their starting lineup. The Grizzlies countered going small with Desmond Bain, DeAnthony Melton, and John Morant. 79 combined total points for Morant, Bain, and Melton was the key difference in the game. And of course, as we have talked about all offseason long here at Locked On Grizzlies, this could be the start of a new era, a new era of focus on shooting the three. 14 threes for the Grizzlies, 42% from three. A big difference in the second and third quarter. Great overall effort on defense from Jaron Jackson Jr. and rebounding effort from Steven Adams. A complete team effort on a night where the Grizzlies bench also certainly shined. While the defense does have a little bit of work to do, the Grizzlies offense certainly shined. And it was a great first opening act for what could be the start of the transition from a rebuilding team to a sustainable winner. If we get performances like this from John Moran and we shoot the three like this, we're going to see success happen for the Grizzlies more often than not during games this season. We'll have this and much more on the post-game edition of the Locked On Grizzlies podcast. Hey, Chris Manning here from the Locked On Cavs podcast. After the 132-121 to loss to the Memphis Grizzlies on the first night of their 2021-22 season, Look, all in all, a loss isn't good. They have a, a tough schedule coming ahead of them, and, and I'm sure they'll be disappointed. But here's the thing. This was, all things considered, I think a positive performance. You had really good performances from Evan Mobley, who had 17, 9, and 6. Colin Sexton had 17 points. Jared Allen had 25 points, although he only had 40 points. Darius Garland was 13, had 13 and 12 and did basically everything well, and including scoring late after he struggled early. Aside from some mental lapses, some points where the Grizzlies really were able to get their lead up into double digits and pull away, some mistakes late, some little learning experiences for a team that is very young and started a very young starting lineup and basically played a bunch of young guys plus Rubio and Kevin Love. This isn't a bad way to start the NBA season. We'll see if they can keep it up. They have games against uh, Charlotte and Atlanta coming up here. We'll be covering all of that on the Lockdown Cavs podcast or daily look at the Cavs. Please subscribe wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. We then turn it over to the Rockets and the Timberwolves. Minnesota had the win in this one, and we have both our Locked On Timberwolves and Locked On Rockets hosts with more. 
Hey everyone, Ben Beacon with Locked On Wolves here. The Minnesota Timberwolves destroyed the Houston Rockets on opening night, winning by 18 points. But this was a game that the Wolves led by more than 30 for a good chunk of the second half. At halftime, the Wolves were already up by 27. Anthony Edwards had 24 just in the first half alone, a career high for any half for Ant. Carlton Towns had 21 at the half. But the story of the game was all about the Timberwolves' defense. The Rockets were on pace to score well under 100 points up until garbage time at the end of the game. And the Wolves' defense was stifling on, admittedly, a young Rockets team. And no, Houston's not going to be very good this year. But if the Wolves play this kind of defense every night, they are going to be, at, at worst, an average defense this season, which would be a huge difference from recent years past, um, especially the last couple of seasons. The Wolves defensively were fantastic. Jade McDaniels, Josh Akogi uh, were the two highlights with no Patrick Beverly playing in this game. It was up to those two, uh, primarily on the perimeter. But everyone got in the act. Anthony Edwards was good defensively. Malik Beasley had a couple of big chase down blocks. Towns was fantastic on both ends of the floor. The story of the game was the Timberwolves defense and the big three. Russell, Towns, Edwards were all fantastic in this game. We're going to talk all about it on post-game Lockdown Wolves coming up tonight. Be sure you subscribe to Lockdown Wolves for all. Growing pains is the name of the game for the Houston Rockets. What's up? Jackson Gatlin here from over at Locked On Rockets. Rockets falling in their season opener on the road against the Minnesota Timberwolves by a final score of 124 to 106. Turnovers, 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 lack of rebounding really did the Rockets in in this one as they dug themselves into a pretty deep hole in the first half that then got even worse in the third quarter when the Timberwolves got really, really hot from behind the three-point arc. D'Angelo Russell going just absolutely turbo nuclear. Kevin Porter Jr. struggling as he adjusts to the role of the point guard position for the Houston Rockets. Nine turnovers in this one. Some flashes though from Jalen Green playmaking wise even though the shot wasn't falling which is a great sign to see. And then Alper and Shingoon who was just putting his imprint all over this game on both sides of the basketball. The playmaking, the defense, all of that. Really great signs from two of the Rockets rookies. And then the CPR squad in the fourth quarter that almost revived this game for the Houston Rockets spearheaded by one Usman Garuba and a couple really impressive defensive plays on his behalf. So we'll break it all down for you over at Locked on Rockets. The Orlando Magic took on the San Antonio Spurs, and the Spurs came away with a W in this first matchup. Jeff Garcia, our Locked on Spurs host, has more here. This is Jeff Garcia with Locked on Spurs. here to give you a quick recap of the Spurs opening night win over the Orlando Magic. Hey, look. If offense was going to be an issue for the Spurs, well, as the great Thanos would say, everything is balanced as perfectly as it should be because the Spurs got balanced on the offensive by Devin Vassell with a career high 19 points, something he highlighted ahead of the season that he wanted to focus on being more aggressive on the offensive end. And he did that. Spurs really got their offense generated by their defense. DeJounte Murray stealing the ball, leading to quick uh, fast break points. Same with Devin Vassell, pickpocketing left and right, getting easy buckets. The Spurs simply put together a complete game from start to finish. And with last season being a, an issue on the three-point line, the Spurs, at least in one game, connected on 43% shooting, 13 of 30 for the night. 50% shooting as well from the field, 49 of 98. It was simply just a, a one game, but it gives the uh, Spurs fan base a glimpse of what could be this season as a lot of the young players took advantage of the minutes now that the veterans uh, are gone from San Antonio. Lonnie Walker, 17 points for the night. DeJounte Murray. 15 points, 8 assists, 6 rebounds, and 4 steals. Yes, 4 steals and points. 123-97 is the final score. Stay tuned right here at Locked On Spurs. And we'll also hear from our Locked On Magic host, Philip Rossman Reek. This is Philip Rossman Reek, the host of Locked On Magic as the Orlando Magic fall to the San Antonio Spurs 123-97. to Look. The Orlando Magic are a young team. They're going to have games where they make mistakes, where they struggle to do very basic things, and, and they need to learn from these things. And tonight was a very big learning lesson for the Orlando Magic. But frankly, it was just a lack of detail and attention to detail, which we've become accustomed to here in Orlando under Steve Clifford. Jamal Mosley really struggled in his first game. His rotations were a bit off. I'm sure he got the curveball of Gary Harris getting scratched uh, very, very late before tip, before tip off. Um, but still, the Magic should have been a whole lot better. Some of their better players didn't play enough minutes. There was fouling. There's a lot of offensive rebounds given up, and the Magic just didn't display the overall defensive attention to detail and defensive strength that they're supposed to have and that they've apparently been working on throughout all of the preseason. Look, this is a young team. We've seen, we saw them struggle with turnovers. We saw them struggle with offensive rebounds and giving up offensive rebounds uh, throughout the course of the preseason. Those struggles continued. And even though Orlando was able to keep things relatively close, and it was really just their depth and their second unit that put them in a 10-point hole, 
there's still no reason that should have expanded out to 27, 28 points and this become a, a complete blowout. So the Orlando Magic have a lot of work to do. They have a lot of things to clean up and they have a lot to learn, which we expected from such a young team. The San Antonio Spurs defeat the Orlando Magic 123 to 97. The Magic back in action Friday against the New York Knicks. The Denver Nuggets took on the Phoenix Suns tonight and we have our locked on Suns host, Brendan Clean, to tell us what went wrong with Phoenix. First game jitters. Brendan Clean here with Locked On Suns coming to you after a 98 to 110 Suns loss in opening night. A rematch of the second round series where the Suns swept the Denver Nuggets. And again, a bizarre one. Almost 20 turnovers for the Suns. Very much looking like a team that made a couple of additions and is integrating some new uh, parts of everything for them. Mikael Bridges a little more shots, Cam Johnson more shots, Landry Shamit getting involved, DeAndre Ayton doing a little bit of shot creation himself, and the, the offense just looked out of sorts. Denver's starters chemistry just really shined, and they were able to run away with this game in the second and third quarter. We'll see how the Suns rebound on Friday against the Lakers on the road. Until then, listen to Locked on Suns for more. And last but certainly not least, we have the Thunder and Jazz, and we have both our Locked On Thunder hosts, Ryan Stiles, and of course, our Locked On Jazz host, David Locke, to talk about the big win for Utah. The rookie class impresses as the Thunder lose in a blowout loss to the Utah Jazz. I'm Ryan Stiles, host of the Locked On Thunder podcast right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. The Oklahoma City Thunder go 0-1 to start the year. That's not a big deal. The season's not about wins and losses for the Thunder. What it is about, though, is player development. And they got just that with their rookie group. Trey Mann, Josh Giddy, Jeremiah Ramos and Earl all, all had fantastic debuts this year, specifically Trey Mann. In his debut, he goes four for seven from the floor, shows why he can be a really good scorer in this league. Josh Giddy breaks the record for rebounds in a debut with 10 boards in his opening uh, sequence in his opening game for the Oklahoma City Thunder. The Thunder lost. They only went three of, you know, seven of 35 from beyond the arc. You will not win many games that way, and they get blown out tonight. But the story of tonight is about the rookies. For more on this game, tune into Locked on Thunder. No surprises on opening night in Utah as the Jazz defense dominates the Thunder and a flurry of offensive scoring sources give the Jazz a runaway win. Hi, I'm David Locke with your Locked On Now on the Jazz win against the Thunder. Last year, the Thunder were 30th in the NBA in offense and haven't really done anything to get better. And the Jazz were the number one defensive team and this went as expected. In no quarter during the game did the Thunder ever average more than one point per possession. Lou Dort of the Thunder does as good a job on Donovan Mitchell as anyone in the NBA. And while he was shutting down Donovan, Donovan shooting just 4 of 12 while guarded by Dort tonight. The Jazz had Jordan Clarkson go off for 5 for 5 in the second quarter. Rudy Gobert had a double-double by the second quarter. Boyan Bogdanovich dropped 22 points on the night. And the Jazz ran away from the Thunder, leading the entire way and as much by as many as 25. For more on this, go to Locked On Jazz and the Locked On Podcast Network. Thanks for making Locked On Now your first listen every weekday morning. For everything else on your favorite NBA teams, make sure that you stay tuned to your local Locked On NBA podcast. I am your host, Kim Becker. Locked On, your team every day.